Hello everyone. Today I'm going to cover how to make a realistic looking 3D shiny button. Um, a round shiny button. So uh, first of all, I'm going to draw a circle. Now, you can do this any way you want. Um, I have a tendency to leave these uh, settings up here like they are, uh, but normally I just hold down the control key and that keep gives me a perfect circle whenever I drag on it. So that being done, I am going to um, go ahead and create a second circle by selecting the contour tool and uh, creating an inner contour. Now I don't want this too much smaller than the original one, so I'm gonna leave it just like that. And then I'm going to change this setting up here in the number of steps, steps in the contour to one. Press enter. Now you can see that there's only one step. There's a, an outer darker circle and an inner uh, lighter circle. Now this is all one, sh one shape still, really. So uh, the first thing I want to do is click arrange and uh, convert it to editable shapes. And then I will hit the arrange menu again and ungroup. And now you can see down here that I have two shapes on layer mouse off. Yes. So I'm going to deselect everything and just select the center circle. I want to make that white. And then I'm going to select the shape editor tool and I'm going to drag select the bottom, uh, the bottom point on it. And I'm going to hold down the uh, shift key and hit the arrow key up a few times. And I want to take that just past about right about right, right to about halfway on the on the circle. You can go maybe a little bit further if you'd like. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to leave that as it is for now. And I'm going to go back to my underlying shape. I'm going to, for right now, change this. Um, uh, I'm going to give it a circular fill. And uh, on the, now you see that I have two points on the circular fill, the, the, the end point and the, and the center point. On the end point, which is what's selected now, you can see it's, it's highlighted red, I'm going to give it a nice darker color. Now I'm using uh, some named colors here, and I'll go over named colors in a minute, but uh, uh, there's some real benefits to using named colors. These are also linked, but I'm going to give it the, uh, the outer uh, fill color a, a darker fill, and I'm going to hit the tab key to select. Now this one is selected, and I'm going to give that a much lighter color. So this uh, gives me a nice um, Kind of a 3D feel. Feel, feel. The uh, the center is is uh, a much lighter color, and it's uh, it radiates out to a darker. Now that that's done, I am going to select my uh, my white shape on top, and I want to give that a linear transparency. So I'm just going to select the transparency tool and start right at the top of it, and I'm going to drag that down to just a little beyond the shape. Yeah, and this will give me um, down the control key so that that stays straight. And that's, uh, that's not looking too bad. The last thing I want to do there is give it a bit of a feather just to hazen up those edges a little bit, about two or three picks. Yeah, let's go ahead and give it a three pick. You can just type it in if you'd like. That looks pretty good. And now I have a nice 3D button. Now if I wanted to put this on a background, for instance, um, I can do that quite easily. I'm going to select my, my background shape and I'm going to hit Control K to clone it. Now I'm going to give it a flat silver fill and now I'm going to go ahead and give it a, um, a bevel. So I select the bevel tool, choose a flat bevel, and I'm going to 
change the light direction to, to down. I've got my contrast set to 78. I'm going to change it to 75. I like the way that looks. And then uh, and the size, 9 picks, that sounds about right. And I'm going to go ahead and hit Control b to put it to back. Now, something didn't happen quite right there, so let me see what's going on. Why didn't I get... interesting. In any case, you can play around with this and get it to look exactly like you want. Now, if you'll notice, uh, I changed the, uh, the the light angle on this bevel to uh, um, to point down. Uh, this is so that it agrees with uh, with my light direction. So the the highlight here on this on this white shade makes it look like the the light's coming from the top. Because I want this bevel to to have a sunken feel. The highlight should be on this side, and the darker uh, the darker here. And to emphasize that a bit more, I'm going to go ahead and draw just a flat square and put that to back. And now you can see that it does indeed have that kind of sunk in feeling. And I'm just going to select the whole thing, make it a little bit smaller, drag it around. You can see exactly what I'm talking about uh, on this. Um, and now I'll get back to the um, to the benefits of using named colors, right? So I used these named and linked colors here, and I'm going to take the main color, the one that all the others are linked to, and drag that up into my color editor and drop it there. So now you can see theme color 2 is selected. And because all of these colors are linked to theme color 2, if I were to take this and slide it across, you can see that the color of the button changes at the same time. Yeah? And they're still well linked, so if I wanted to drag this around, right, get something slightly different, I could do that too. Um, but that's uh, my quick and dirty tutorial on how to create uh, a shiny round button in uh, Zara Designer Pro.